and welcome to my coding channel. Today, you are gonna code your first website and put it available online on the internet for your friends, your family, and your pets, and everyone in the world to see. So let's get started. Let's go to the github.com web website and let's register. Pick a username that you are happy to have in your URL for your website because that will make part of the URL. Once you've created your account, you'll be presented to the welcome page and just pick the free account, which is unlimited public repositories. We want everything to be public so we can join the open source community. On step three, you can just skip the step. Before we can actually create a repository where we're gonna put our project, you need to verify that email address. When, once you verify your account, you'll get taken to this page and you can click the green button, new repository. The repository name is going to be our account name .github.io in this case, because we want it to be a special repository so it's hosted available online. And we can call it my first website. You can type anything you want in the, in the description and it's gonna be public. And we'll initialize it with a readme and that's it. And then we hit create repository and you're taken to the repository page. There's actually a lot of information up here and we'll go through this in another video, but we have issue sections so you can log your tasks that you want to create and do work for in the future. There's pull requests if people want to contribute to your project. Projects, which is like a project board where you can um, have your tasks and drag them across from um, to do to in progress to finish. A wiki is pretty self-explanatory. Insights is graphs and statistics on your repository and then settings for your account. And what we want to do is create a new file and we're gonna call it index.html. And then in the file, let's just type our name for now. We'll come back and change this. And then down the bottom, if we scroll down, we've when we save it, which is all known as a commit in GitHub, we need to give it a reason why we're making this save. So in the future, we'll have an audit trail of all the changes we've made. Created index uh, file with example data. Don't make it too long, but just uh, descriptive enough. And then we can leave it on the first radio button, which is commit directly to master branch. And then we commit the file, which means save. Now we've created index.html with our name in it. If we type in a new tab, the name of our repository, and I'm being lazy here, so I'm gonna copy it, open it in a new tab, and paste it in, it has our name. This URL is available to everyone. Go try it on your phone. Go call your friend or your family member and try it. They will see your name in this browser live on the internet. And that took like less than 30 seconds and we haven't even started coding. You can see how exciting this is. So let's go to the next step. So back to here, back to our repository page. What's in the readme is actually displayed below. We will cover that in another episode. If we click on index, we can see it has our name, which is what we wrote in it. And we've got at the top right, we've got this pen. So let's edit this file, let's make another change. So underneath our name, let's put a description about ourselves. Uh, Eddie is an open source coder. I scroll to the bottom again, description, message, add it. We'll leave it on the default, which is commit direct to master and commit the changes. As we can see, this file now has line one and a blank line two, and then line three is a description. So if I go along to the tab, which is live on the internet, this usually takes about 30 seconds to a minute. It depends how busy GitHub is. But if I now press refresh, you can see now it has the new additional information that we added. Eddie Jowd, Eddie is an open source coder. But it's all on one line, so that we need to start adding a bit of code, a bit of HTML to break up the content. So let's go back to our uh, file, our index.html. Let's hit edit. Let's start doing some really basic HTML. So around my name, Eddie, I'm gonna put a H1. And H1 is a heading one, so it's like the first heading and you always close a tag, so what we call a h tag, with the same tag, but it begins with a forward slash. And when I do another one, you, it will make more sense. So with the description, we will use a p tag. 
So it's always the less than angle bracket, P, and then the greater than angle bracket to open the tag. And the closing tag is the same, less than angle bracket, forward slash, the tag which we had opened previously, which in this case is P, and then the greater than angle bracket. Let's just save that and let's see how it looks. So in the comment we can write something like HTML added. And we'll commit changes. We'll go along to the next tab in our Chrome browser, but you can use any browser. Let's see if we refresh it. Now it's updated. You can see Eddie Jowd is big in big writing, like a heading. So you actually have H1, H2, up to H6. And then Eddie is an open source coder, is in a paragraph text, and it's below. Let's go make some more changes. So back to the previous tab in Chrome. Let's hit edit this file. Let's do another paragraph underneath. Coding on YouTube is fun. And we'll close the paragraph bracket. It's always good to end the file with a blank ending line, and I'll go into details why that is in, in the future, but no spaces, no nothing. Uh, always end the file with an empty blank line. Let's put a H2 underneath. So I mentioned there is H2 as well as up to H6. So we can say uh, open source. And again, we need to close the H2 tag. Every tag that we open, we need to close. And we can say subheading and extra description added. Commit. And if we go along to the next tab in our Chrome, we will give it a, a minute. So hit refresh, now you can see it has Eddie Jowd in the biggest writing, and then open source underneath in the H2 tag is slightly smaller, and then Eddie is an open source coder, and coding on YouTube is fun, are the same, because they're both P tags. To make this really valid HTML and to put the styling that we want in the future, we need to uh, wrap our body content, the body is what we want displayed in the page, we need to uh, wrap it in some meta tags. So let's do that now, and this is the same every time. This will be doc type HTML, which is HTML5. And then we will have a HTML tag, and we will need the closing one at the end, so let's make sure we close it. And it's always good to indent uh, the, the tag so it's easier to read. And under the HTML, we will have head, and the, the head tag, is uh, where we have our metadata. Um, so if we go across to the tab along, uh, you can see the, the tab title is just our URL, but we might want to write something in there like Eddie Jowd, so that's what we will put in the head. So in head, uh, we can have something like title, and if we close title, because it's still a HTML tag, and if we just say Eddie Jowd, um, and you'll see that will appear in the tab. And then all our visual content needs to be in the body. So we open the body there. We will indent this one more time. And then before the HTML, so everything needs to, um, if you notice, everything needs to uh, uh, align accordingly. If you notice, everything needs to align accordingly, the HTMLs open and close with the right nesting. The same with the heading and same with the body. You can't have things intertwined. You can have things nested, but not intertwined. So now, just to recap, we have this is always the same on all HTML pages. Um, and then you will close the he head and then immediately open the body. Then inside the body, we will put what we want displayed on the page and then we will close the body and close the HTML. We need that blank empty line at the end. So we've done quite a lot there. So let's commit this and see. Completed HTML page. Click on the committed changes at the bottom. So now we've got this. So we can see in the uh, head tag, we have our title and we can put other things in there like keywords and, and other things for SEO. So let's go along to the second tab. And if we look, we'll look at the title in the in the tab here, it is the URL. So when this reloads, it should 
be what we put in the HTML title tag. So let's refresh. So this actually content here in the body shouldn't change. That stayed the same. Refresh it. And now you can see it has changed to Eddie Jowl. So we can change that from page to page, but the body content is still the same. That's awesome, right? You've now got your coding HTML and it's live on the internet. So let's put some styling in. Should we make this change some colors and make it a bit fancier? Right. If we hit edit again, now if we want to style our content, we will create the style tag. And we need to close it just like every other tag inside the head. And then we can pick any H2 element we want. So we have a H1, a H2, and we have two Ps. And if we pick H1 first, H1, open a curly brace. Let's make it a bit more readable. So we will put it on separate lines. And then you have your property and then your value. So our property in this case, we want to make color and it's the American style of color. And we then say something like red and semicolon just to finish the line. Now, if we save that, added styling for H1, commit changes, go along to our next tab. So now if I hit refresh, Eddie Jowd is in red. Having fun? See, coding is so creative and imagine we start putting links and images in. Let's add some styling to a P tag. So we'll open and close the curly braces and inside we could do text decoration, say underline. And then we come down to the bottom and this will affect both P tags because we've uh, set it to, to act on all P tags. Um, and we can say styling for paragraph commit. Let's go along to the next tab, refresh the tab and you can now see the paragraphs are now underlined. We are building a website. I wanted to keep it really short and sweet for today's video. So please, before the next video, learn some HTML and CSS, have a play, just you can't get it wrong. Send me your links of your website. I look forward to having a look at what you've built and get experimenting, have some fun, play. We're gonna focus on HTML and CSS to begin with, and then in the future we'll move to JavaScript, and then after websites we can maybe move into something like writing some games, and you'll see how much fun it is. We can build on what you've learned and write some games or some mobile apps. It's all built using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So those are your core main languages to learn. It's so fun, it's so creative, and so addictive. Get your friends involved, get them to join. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more about getting into coding, open source, tech events, diversity and inclusion, and let's get more people coding. Coding is more fun when you're coding with your friends. Let's continue this discussion below.